people have to have confidence in you. Yes, they do. They want somebody who has walked a walker and they say, well, what do you know about this? What has your experience has been with yeah. this? Okay. Well, I have a lot of experience from corporate America, uh, so I definitely know what the burnout feels like from mm -hmm. that aspect. So you're aware of that type of pressure mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. the uh, impersonableness of it. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And I think that's where uh, a lot of people get lost in the world. Have you ever, you get people who feel that they've lost themselves? Mm, yeah. Um, occasionally people will admit that. Well, that has a great deal to do with it and, and burnout and, mm -hmm. and, and those type of things when they're constantly reinforced that they're not good enough until it becomes that old self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. Absolutely. So I, I read all of your blog and it was well written uh, and you talk about visualization and you mm -hmm. talk about positive self-talk. Mm -hmm. Say more about that. Um, well, I'm a huge fan of visualization. I keep a vision board in my kitchen um, that has affirmations on it, has goals on it. Um, and you can do visualization in that way. Or you can just do visualization in your head where okay. you just spend a few minutes, um, you know, calm, distraction free, and just envision what you want your life to look like or even feel how you'd feel when you've uh, reached that goal and just start to really, you know, even imagine the smells in the air, the uh, things that you're feeling and really just use your imagination to put yourself in that position of what you want to be accomplished, you know, once you've reached that goal that you're setting out for. And I think that we live in a world where of instant gratification and wanting things now. And I think most people don't understand that this is a cumulative type of effect. Mm -hmm. They just can't do it once and uh, be there. It's not like Dorothy clicking her heels three times and saying, you know, there's no place like home, okay? No. Nope. So there's no magic slippers. There's no clicking. So I often suggest to people, what you're asking me to do is plant a cherry seed and have cherry pie this afternoon. Okay, so how do you, how do you help people deal with the frustration that, their success is going to be measured in increments? Um, well, once you kind of set things up and, and they get that, you know, the first success, the, the quick, easy win, it makes it a little, it adds some motivation. So, you know, it's really just let's, let's kind of get the cog turning and then you'll see that things, you know, start to move and get oiled a little bit. So it's really just setting somebody up for that small win right away. There you go. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. So we said, so we have people have achievable goals yep. and then it's okay to celebrate that success. Absolutely. Absolutely. We should celebrate all our small successes. So I often say to somebody, that if your goal is to lose 10 pounds and after a week you get on a scale, which your scale it can be your worst enemy, um, get on there and you've lost six ounces. You can either view that as a failure or can you view that as a good start? You can definitely view that as a good start. And I have that um, a terrible relationship with my scale. So that, <laughs> one, that one hits close to home. <laughs> well, scales are not our friend. No. No, not our friend at all. So I was also under the, the visualization, the positive self-talk. So how do you lead somebody through a script of uh, positive self-talk? 90% of cognitive behavioral therapies about changing the language in the way you speak to yourself. Absolutely. Well, I like to talk to people about the different ways of thinking. There's the, you know, the black or white thinking, you know, there's the self-deprecating thinking and um, getting people to realize what they do and what that, their downfall is in their yeah. negative thinking. And then as soon as we start to recognize that, immediately say something to ourselves and switch it around. So I used to tell myself all the time, um, <laughs> and this wasn't that long ago, I'm, <laughs> I'm fat and lazy. Because I didn't want to, I, I felt like I can't get up and, and, you know, do my yoga like I should, right? <laughs> I should be doing my yoga yeah. six, seven days a week. Uh -huh. And because I'm not doing it today, I'm fat and lazy. 
instead of telling myself, <laughs> I, I finally had to turn that around and start telling myself, as soon as I said, oh, I'm so fat and lazy, say, ah, I am strong and I am willful. So how do you get people to help recognizing those self-defeating words and turn those into words like I choose? Well, um, I like to get people into journaling oh. and, and making records and, um, you know, even just jotting down certain things, not even necessarily in a journal, but on a okay. piece of paper, just holding, carrying it with you and, you know, just starting to recognize because a lot of these things have been going on in our minds for so long and we don't even realize that it's this constant monologue that's going on and it's mm, negative. Yeah. So first it's what are what are those self-limiting beliefs that we're telling ourselves and then, you know, take note of every time that you hear yourself saying this in the back of your head, what is going on at that time, what's going on in the environment around you, and then, you know, because maybe there's a trigger, maybe something is triggering you, so that way you can identify what some of your triggers are, and then kind of say, okay, well, what am I going to say to myself instead? Okay, so what you're developing is a whole different way of living. Basically, a, a design yes. for living, yep. okay? So it's not like, going to a weight loss center and you think that's going to conquer everything or I've been I, I don't know where this comes from but I've been having some people telling me about this magic coffee that they've been drinking that makes them lose weight are you aware of that oh I need some of that <laughs> that's the quicker that's the quick yeah. easy way right <laughs> well in the 12-step world we'd call that the easier, the easier softer. softer way yeah right yeah right so but there's there's a way that it takes it takes action and effort so People don't want to. They don't want to do that. Yeah. So when people come to you, how do you determine their willingness to move forward? Um, well, there's a few questions I ask, but one of them is how committed are you to doing this right now? And, um, you know, how willing are you to put forth the effort? How much effort are you willing to put forth? And if they're answering, like on a scale of 1 to 10, if they're answering a 7 or below... I don't, I'm probably not going to want to work with you because I want to work with those people who truly want to put the effort forth, who want to make the commitment and invest in themselves. Your time's worth much and you don't want to waste it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when the 12 step rolled again in the chapter called working with others, it's suggested that if you approach someone and they're not willing or able to accept or incorporate what you have to offer, then move on to someone and else. Move on. Absolutely. Yeah, because there's others out there who yeah. will, who will accept yeah. that. And I don't want to see anybody waste their money. I mean, sure, you can go ahead and give me your money, but I want you to get something for it. Good for I want you. you to get something for the time that we're spending together. Uh -huh. I don't want you to feel the way that you feel on day one or day zero of signing up with me, that is not the way I want you to feel on day 90. So uh, another interesting part that I can connect with is when you talk about vibrations. Ah. Say more about that. Um, well, I believe that um, there's energy within us and around us everywhere in the universe. And there's high vibrational energy, there's low vibrational energy, but all energy has a vibration. And if you know anything about the law of attraction, basically what you put out, you attract. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we move throughout our days mm -hmm. and throughout our life with a positive energy so that we attract positive energy. Right. And so we can generate positive energy. Mm -hmm. And really what you're talking about is strength theory and that quantum physics. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So what we talk about is when the Buddhists, when they do the, their mantras and their chants, they're all based on Sanskrit. And it's not necessarily the words. It's the tonation. Yep. It's the vibration. The of vibration. The yeah. One of uh, one of the common is um, so hum and I mean, the yoga people have taken over that too. Um, so hum. Uh, and what it translates into is I am that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So their, their thoughts are, is that all beings are made up of the same energy. If we take all the elements and break them down into the, uh, 
atoms, protons, neutrons, and we break them down into the quarks and whatever. We end up where we're all created of the same type of energy. Mm -hmm. So their thought is that I am that, which led to their philosophy of the Buddha says do no intentional harm, which means that I'm not, why would I harm anything intentionally because it's part of me? Absolutely. Yeah. We are all interconnected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm aware that most everything is repackaged buzzwords uh, <laughs> and nothing, there's nothing really all that new. Uh, it just seems all this mindfulness fad, a fad yeah. that's, that's uh, 10,000 years old. Yep. Okay. And we, of our society, this individualistic society we have, everything that works, we seem to figure that we invented it. Uh, yeah. Mindfulness is a really big buzzword um now and and i use it myself but yeah. you know it, what else are you going to do i mean it's something that i feel that everybody has to learn so if you're only finding out about it now so be it it's paying attention on purpose yep absolutely okay. it's being in the present moment well sometimes i'll just say to people you know every now and then sets your watch and every half an hour scream to yourself wake up <laughs> and and that's and that's what it is so you're looking, are you finding this fulfilling? Do you feel that you're contributing? Do you feel that you're a part of? Um, I do, yeah. I'm finding that um, through this work, I'm really able to connect with people and help people find solutions to their problems. And it gives me purpose. Yeah, it gives you purpose. Yeah. And I have a hunch that that's what also part of the wellness plan for you with people is for them to find a purpose. Absolutely, also. yep. So, and again, we, when we get back to the thought that most people stay in relationships, jobs, whatever, because they're familiar and not comfortable, uh, how do you help people with the courage to change? Well, um, I talk people through the stages of change where we're kind of, we're in that pre-contemplation phase and then we kind of, well, maybe we'll change and then coming up with a plan. Well, I think I'm going to plan to change. So just working them through, finding out where they are. I mean, some people have no intention of changing, even though they know they're, they have bad habits, whereas other people, um, know they want to change, but they don't really know how. So I'm there to offer that support and help them find creative ways to, to bring that change into their life in ways that um, mean something to them as well. It means something yeah. to them. And that's a, we can't put our own template of life on other people. Simply because we cho like chocolate ice cream and it makes us feel happy, we can't expect everyone else to eat chocolate ice cream and have the same results. Absolutely. Yeah, one of the um, topics that I go through with people is motivation, helping them find their motivation and what works for them, what's going to keep them moving forward toward that goal that they're they're aiming at. Oh, well, that sounds exciting. Do you ever find people actually when they start to open their eyes up a little bit and get a little bit of light in their eyes that they actually say, hey, wow. Absolutely. Yeah. It's fun to see people have those insights uh -huh. uh, into their the, those yeah. aha moments. Yeah. How yeah. is it to have people feel excited about their life again? Oh, it's it feels very rewarding. Yeah. It's really nice when I've worked somebody through um, some process and we come out at the end of a session with an action plan or, you know, a list of ideas mm -hmm. that we were working toward. So when did you feel that you started to get excited about your own life? When or what? When? When? Probably last year um, when I separated from corporate America. Okay. And um, did a lot of soul searching, was thinking maybe I would um, go back to teaching, maybe go back to school. I thought maybe I'd go into counseling and, you know, because I, I knew I wanted to help somehow, help people and teach at the same time. And when it finally clicked that coaching was, was the way for me to do that, it was very exciting. Mm. And I just jumped in with both feet. I didn't even bother um, even thinking through it maybe as much as I should have because it just felt like the right direction. So okay. I just jumped in with both it feet. It felt like the right thing to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, Stephanie, there's a difference between a risk and a gamble. A gamble is when you can lose everything. A risk is something that you can recover from. Yeah, yeah. So my thought is that you have some other people in your life that are supporting you through this. Oh, absolutely. 
Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, my husband. Okay. <laughs> well, tell about uh, tell about uh, a husband when his wife comes home and says, "Hey, guess what? I'm uh, I'm reversing course." <laughs> oh, my husband has been very supportive. Uh, of me during Uh this transition it has been wonderful it's nice to um know that i have the um the liberty to kind of follow my dream and follow my own creative course Mm -hmm. so what you're saying is this person gives you the freedom to decide absolutely okay do you believe that this person understands you i do do you believe this person listens to you most of the time. Okay. Do you believe this person <laughs> respects you? Yes. Do you believe this person gives you the benefit of the doubt? Yes. Okay. So those are core emotional concerns. And if somebody isn't giving you those type of things, give me a reason that those people are in your life. This is what I'm talking about, the people you place around you. Yeah. Well, these people could be your employer. Um, they could be your neighbors. I mean, there's a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know, in any area of our life that could be a non-supportive person that we kind of have to put our or have to be around um if we so choose i like that word also yeah i mean you don't have to be around that negative nancy boss if you just find yourself a new job so what you're saying is the things that you worked in your own life you're you're showing to other people oh absolutely and that's really um, that's really what I'm going by is, you know, I'm teaching the things that worked for me. Ah. These are the tools, the tips, the techniques that I use, um, on a daily basis or that I have used to get myself out of, you know, a position where you might be as well. So if you want what we have and are willing to go to any length to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. That some of these <laughs> steps we bought, we thought we could find an easier, easier softer, softer way. way. But we could not, with all the earnestness at our command, we beg of you to be fearless and thorough from the very start. Yeah. So here are the steps we took, which are suggested as a program of recovery. So we're all in recovery from something. We are all are in not? recovery from something. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you help people understand that they don't have to go on this journey by themselves? Um, yeah, I like to say that I'm, I'm certainly there to be your biggest cheerleader, but um, I will be hard on you as well. Like I'm I not going to, so. I'm not going to let you get away with your BS. Well, you have to. You set goals and commitments and challenges. Yeah. Yep. And not unrealistic, of course. So if someone would say, hey, I really like what uh, Stephanie has, and I'd like to maybe talk to her a little bit more, how would one contact you? Sure. Well, my email address is stephanie at embody360wellness.com. My website is www.embody360wellness.com. Or if it's the only thing you remember from tonight, you can go to theburnoutdoctor.com. The burnout doctor? The burnout doctor. Wow, isn't that cool? Okay. Well, that's great. So we certainly lovely Stephanie was here with us this evening. And as a uh, disclaimer, some transparency, Stephanie and I have been uh, friends since before yesterday. And (laughs) as a, as at the end of every podcast, we offer a free prescription and that's fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we suggest that you fish without bait. Forgive yourself, forgive another. Do a kindness for yourself. Do a kindness for yourself and do a kindness for another. Till all are free, none are free. Namaste. Please check out our website at fishingwithoutbait.com where you can listen to the show comment on our discussions, and find out where you can subscribe to our podcast. If you're interested in flying the colors of Fishing Without Bait, click the shop icon on our website. We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.